Because really what that comes to is the search engine optimization. Does your website hold the keywords that people are searching for? Because that's really all Google is, is it's, it's using algorithmic learning to figure out who is answering the questions people are asking. And so for instance, if, you, if I type in uh, how to plant a tree, right? This is really the reason why a lot of companies have blogs and because you can make that blog how to plant a tree and then you can write all of these instructions on how to do that. And what Google does is you type in how to plant a tree and it triggers the keywords because that was the name of your blog. So someone goes on and they read it and it will track how long they stayed on that page if they read through it. And then if they click out and they don't continue to search, then Google says, oh, this page answered this person's question. Wow. And so the next time someone types it in, it's like, okay, this page has been answering this question. So let's continue to give it more leads because all Google is trying to do is be as optimized as possible to give people the best experience possible. And that's what your website needs to do too. And so if your website can answer the questions that people are asking and it can track that they're click on your website and they're done asking that question, it will continue to give it more leeway. It'll keep pushing it up the ranking. So that's why we talk about keywords and search engine optimization all the time. But so yeah. So let's say you don't have a website at all. It's a little bit longer process uh, because when you build a website, it's a good opportunity to look at your branding. It's a good idea to look at, you know, your, some of your core values and kind of your core language in your company. Cause you need to translate that to a website so that again, it's, it's trust building what you say in a sales pitch, what you say on a job site, the uniforms you wear, it all needs to tie together. Cause that just promotes trust. It promotes professionalism. And so we'll usually take a, like a hard stop there when we go into the website building process and say, okay, are you happy with your branding? Are you happy with your colors? Are you happy with your uniforms? Are you happy with your logo, et cetera, et cetera. It's like if you, cause if you are, then great, we can go ahead and start implementing those into a new website. If not, then let's explore, you know, getting with a graphic designer and building new logos and choosing new colors, et cetera, et cetera. And so that process can take anywhere from, you know, a month to three months, depending on how deep the branding lines are going to go. But the real, the real kicker is the flow of the website. Like you want something that's easy to digest. So Stephanie, our web designer, she is awesome at what she does. And after she builds your website, she will go through it detail by detail and one, like one of her key indicators is, can I read the entire homepage in 45 seconds or less? Can wow. I digest all the information in 45 seconds or less? If she can do that and she's like, great. If not, then it's probably too wordy or there's too much I'm trying to put on the homepage. So maybe I need to build a services page or an about page, et cetera, et cetera. And if you have too deep of a, what we call a page tree, you have so many pages on your website, then there's a lot of places for people to get lost. And so we typically do for like the green industry specifically, we'll do a homepage, a services page, an about us page so they can get to know you, yep. see a picture of you, your crews, your family, uh, why you started the business, how long you've been in business. Because again, you're, you're creating an emotional response that indicates trust. And the more people trust you, the more than likely they are to go with you, even if you cost a little bit more. You know, trust and money have this like weird balance of it's so expensive that I don't care if I trust you or I trust you so much that I don't care how much it costs. Yep. So you're always kind of dancing that balance because if you're $500 over the next guy, uh, depending on what you're doing, they'll probably say, well, $500 is a lot of money. But if it's 100 bucks or 50 bucks, they're like, oh, I'm definitely going to choose the people I trust over the people and then just because it's going to cost me 50 bucks, right? Yep. Because we all know a guy, right? The same guy who walks your dog, the same guy who fixes your car, the same guy who cuts your lawn care. Um, and that guy is always trust. So you want to be the guy when it comes to taking care of someone's lawn, especially people who really care about their lawn. So you need to do good work. Your website needs to reflect that you do good work, that there's a history of people trusting you. So that's where like testimonials come in. Have yep. other people said that they trust you? Have other people had good experiences with you? Um, Paul, you could probably answer this. How often, before you buy anything on like Amazon or online, do you ever look at the reviews? Oh yeah, I was just before we hopped on this uh, show, I was on, uh, looking at reviews for something that I'm considering getting. And I mean, I'm deep in the weeds of, of looking at the reviews, reading the reviews, how many one guy had all five star reviews, but he only had five. The other guy had 96. Yeah. And the the one guy, the prices, the one guy's price was six times higher. OK, wow. six times higher. But he had you know, 96 reviews versus the other guy's got five reviews. So anyway, I'm I'm comparing and contrasting and I'm money is something I'm considering for sure. You know, I, it's not, it, I don't have infinite money. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I have a, a budget, a <laughs> limit. Wouldn't that be nice. <laughs> but there is um, the, the trust, the credibility. I'm, I'm, I'm researching this and that comes from experience. I think a lot of our customers are older. 
uh, in the lawn care business, you know, most, most people don't, you know, get their first home until they're in their late twenties, thirties, forties. And with that experience typically comes wisdom, Chris, and, you know, maybe teenagers are 20 somethings, they have no risk tolerance. They'll just go buy whatever and kind of figure life out as they go. But someone who's a little bit older, they've been burnt enough times by crooks, by people who are dishonest, that those scars lead you to, to be more careful with your money, especially in an economy with the fluctuating uncertainty that we have. I think a lot of folks who are smart enough to own a home and, and to I want it to look nice and who are going to hire us. That, that's a certain level of IQ of our customers. They're the type of people that this very is very important to them, that they can go to your website and see that you're trustworthy, that you're credible, that you got social proof, that you have a bunch of other people saying um, kind things about the quality of your service. So I, I can't reiterate that enough of how important that is. And it hurts me, Chris, when I'm coaching somebody and I look at their website and I'm typing an anti, I can't find it because they don't have one. Or if they do have one, it's so raggedy. It's it's like you said, the entry level Squarespace that they put together, and it just you can tell it it, it gives you a a, a reservation that uh, do I really want this person on my property? Right. Yeah. If I see you drive up in a wife beater, I'm kind of like, uh, I know it's hot, but that just looks bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, building that trust is a huge thing. So, like for instance, iPhones, right? Like mm-hmm. by far not the cheapest option you know, in the cell phone realm, but it's by far the most popular phone and it has been for years and years. Mm-hmm. And even now when they're, you know, a thousand, eleven hundred, twelve hundred bucks each, but that's because I've never had a, a negative experience with an iPhone. I've never had a negative experience with anything in the Apple ecosystem. And there's a whole lot of reasons why you can decide you want to go with it or not. But regardless of that, they've built a high level of trust when it comes to their product, that it's reliable, that the things that they say work, they do work. Mm-hmm. You know, it's expandable in a lot of ways that bring tools to me to help my life be easier. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what you want to be in your industry. You want to be the iPhone of your industry. You don't want to be the cheapest, but you don't want to be the most expensive, but on a, you know, a scale of one to 10 of cheap to expensive, you can afford to be a seven or eight. If you have the trust to back it up, mm-hmm. if you don't, then no one, no one has a reason to spend more money with you than the next guy in your website, your Google reviews, your social media presence. All those things are you communicating trust to people who are hopefully likely to go with your service or in the market for your service. And you're communicating to them that I'm worth the cost. I'm worth investing in. I'm mm-hmm. worth having on your property. You know, that's all you're doing all the time. And, you know, there's all these things about cheating algorithms and all that kind of stuff, especially when it comes to Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, you know, how can I just explode my channel? Well, if you're consistent and you provide value, then you will grow. Yeah. It really is that simple. Um, the platforms are built to push people who have lots of engagement and they're getting engagement because they're authentic. They're within their niche and they're giving value to people who view their content. Same thing with your website. Give people value when they sign, when they find your website. Give them a reason to call you. Give them a reason to give their give you their personal information so that you can reach back out to them, so that they can give you their hard earned money, so that you can work for your hard earned money to continue to build your own business and build that trust. And so it's this exchange of trust back and forth between you and your client, and your website, your Google reviews, your social media, all of that is part of it. Yeah, and the predicament folks have, and and this is. I wear a hat on the green industry podcast as teacher, but then I wear another hat as business consultant when I'm doing a one-on-one business coaching session with someone, Chris. And here's what I find when I really look under the hood at someone's business. It's like, someone's like, okay, yeah, I want a website for sure. But I also, I also need a new, um, you know, enclosed trailer, open trailer, and I need to get that new mower. And I, you know, we don't even have uniforms We're we're not wearing the wife beater, but we're, you know, we're wearing, raggedy whatever we need uniforms and i oh man i really need to hire a new guy so there's you know eight to twelve things that the small business owner um legitimately wants to do to grow their business and to make more money and every single one of them is important there's yes. not one thing that they say hey what do you think about this Paul? i'm like yes 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 now here's the problem they have seven thousand dollars in their bank account or they have 50, you know, $555 in a bank account. Right. right. And, and they have um, a limited amount of funds and th- they're stressed out with work and, and everything going on. And so what we do is we, we just say, okay, let's write down 
you know, I'm giving you kind of behind the scenes of a coaching call, but let's, let's write down these 12 things that are to do's that, that we, we want to accomplish. Let's make a checklist. So we'll write them all down of, of what, Ever the situation is hiring the new employee, getting the new trailer, getting the new mower, um, getting the uniforms, et cetera, getting the website. We, we put it on an order and then we look at how much you know money really is available to tackle these things. So let's say there's X amount of money and, and then that's only going to um, take, you know, take us through, you know, getting one or two of those things done. And so we might we might have a 12 part we might have a 12 month plan to execute all the things we're trying to do, or it might even be a 24 month plan just because of the limited amount of money. But my point in saying all this is always at the top of this list or or right, you know, in the top three or four, every single time is a website. I'm like, this is so important. And, and, and we got to scrape together, whether it's 3000 bucks, 5,000 bucks or whatever, we, we have to prioritize getting this website those right words on the website, getting ourselves in position with the SEO, the good pictures the you said about us, the importance of, of really com- communicating who you are, what you stand for. And, you know, a website that's actually created with the call to actions are, are very simple to click on and to get the customer's information and all these things. And so I think I, I want to get that off my chest because people are out there listening. This isn't something you put in 11th or 12th place. Like, oh yeah, you know, after I get my mower, my weed eater, this and that, and it needs to it needs to rise on the charts and this especially as folks are listening in real time in the spring rush and, and hopefully you're making bank get your website checked off the list and uh chris you guys offer at pure marketing you guys offer building a website like you said stephanie and your team over there i just looking at eric hill's website from Fayark that you created for him it's phenomenal you guys did an incredible job um you had a nice picture of him with explaining who he is you got your call to actions you got the the words, the pictures, you guys do a great job. So tell us a little bit more for someone who's ready to, to get uh, a new website, how they can connect with you guys. Yeah, it's super simple to get a hold of us. You just go to uh, the green industry podcast.com and look in the resources page. And there's a picture of Alex Kirby, our owner. He also owns Strife to landscaping. Um, and it just it's, you just click on there. There's a website form for the green industry podcast. It's specifically for you guys to get a hold of us that way. Um, just fill out the form and then a member of our team will call you back. It's usually me. So if you have, if you want to ask me cool. some more specific questions you get off of this episode, I'll be more, I would love to, to talk to you about it. And the most fun part that I have being, uh, in this industry is that I get to be part of your team. So I was talking with a guy this afternoon who's, he's moving to a new city. He's been doing landscaping six or seven years with a family company and he's ready to branch out on his own. And I was like, man, that's awesome. That's really cool. And, but he's not looking to move until the end of the year. And he was kind of like starting to talk about, you know, get some social help and get some website help. And I was like, yeah, man, that's, those are all good things that you want to do. Uh, it's probably not your best interest to do it yet. Like, you know, it, if, if right. you have the cash now, you don't know if you don't think you'll have it later, then yeah, we can go ahead and build it. And then we can just click it on, you know, when you get out there. But as far as a great return on investment, let's go ahead and start building it like a month or two before you go out there in the day that you start uh, collect need to collect leads. We'll click it on, click the Google ads on, all that stuff, get you out in front of people because that's going to be the best return on your investment. Um, so, yeah, if you want to talk to us about building a website, just go to that web form through the Green Industry Podcast website and a member of our team will get out to you and we'll, we'll hook you up with Stephanie. Uh, she'll walk you through the whole process. It's super quick, super easy. She'll walk you through it as she builds it. You know, you'll have drafts to look at so you can be like, I like that, I don't like that. Can we add this? Can we add that? Really love mm-hmm. to have this picture of me and my family here, you know, those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, and we'll take great care of you. Yeah. So that's available, guys, at the resource center at the Green Tree Podcast.com. And we've really spent this has been years in the making, Chris. We we've developed this resource center where we have the best of the best recommendations for everything to run a high profit business. And so it's cool to add you guys to our resource center. So that if you guys need a website, just visit Green Tree Podcast.com and uh, we have a resource center there. And uh, you can uh, fill out that form and probably you'll, the next step is Chris will call you and uh, get this moving. And I uh, definitely this year, you know, make sure you have a solid website and, and it's not just um, hiring anybody like you guys understand since you've owned a landscaping business, you probably understand even a little bit better, even if someone else is good at building a website because they don't have that experience of being in the trenches of building a lawn care business, a landscaping business. It's just more um, organic with the way you can put the words and understand the mind of the consumer. 
you've been in this business and, and build a multi-million dollar business. So, um, you know, you and Alex and the team over there, I just think uh, it's really cool that you've um, branched out and are helping folks with this part of their business. So um, check it out, guys. It's at the Resource Center at the com. Chris, always good having you on the show, man. We'll hopefully do this more in the future. Uh, you always add high value to our audience. So I just want to say thanks again for, for uh, bringing a good microphone. Yeah, man. <laughs> I hate, I don't like when my guests have raggedy microphones, man. Pet peeve of mine, but you got to, you got to get a nice little mic there. Yeah, man. I stole the down to business podcast microphone to make this call. So I got to put and it back for Alex knows I did it. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. We'll, we'll hopefully bring you back on the program here sooner than later. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, man. I really love everything you're doing. You're really, you're really a light to our industry and you know, we appreciate you so much. Thank you, man. We'll be in touch. All right, brother. You have a good rest of your day.